Friends, in this video we are going to discuss the concept and numerical on conjugate beam method and which is uh, structural analysis. So let's take one example. Before going to take our example, let's discuss one concept uh, behind the conjugate beam method. So basically the conjugate beam method is used to find the slope and deflection at any point on the determinate or indeterminate structure. So basically we are having only the determinate structure in our course. So let's take one example only on the determinate structure like a simply supported beam which is acting over the uniformly distributed load. Okay. And we are interested in finding the slope and deflection at that particular beam or structure. So uh, what is the concept behind this conjugate beam method? So it is uh, the two Mohr's theorem are present that is the Mohr's theorem 1 and Mohr's theorem 2. So Mohr's theorem 1 states that if you need to find the slope at any point or in any point in the given beam or actual beam then it is equal to the shear force in the conjugate beam. Okay. And Mohr's theorem 2 will represent that if you need to find the deflection at any actual beam or in given beam then it will be equal to the bending moment in the conjugate beam. Okay. So this is the two basic uh, concepts uh, based on this the conjugate beam method is applied. Okay. So um, shortly and this is our conjugate beam method. So conjugate beam method is used uh, to determine the slope and deflection at any point in the determinate or indeterminate structures. Okay. And uh, what is the most theorem one? That is Mohr's theorem 1. It states that slope at any point in the real beam is equal to the shear force at that corresponding point in the conjugate beam. Okay. Conjugate beam. And uh, what is this most second theorem? So if you need to find the deflection in any real beam or your actual beam then it is equal to the uh, bending moment in the conjugate B. Okay, so based on these two concepts, uh, I will show you how you calculate the slope and deflection of a simply supported field. So if you are given with one simply supported beam, simply supported beam is having one hinge support at one point and roller support at another point. Okay. And it, it is acting a uh, uniformly distributed load over this span W intensity per unit run and span is your L. Okay. This is your A point, this is your B point, okay, and uh, you need to find the slope at A and B and uh, deflection at the center, deflection at the center, that is your C point, if I am considering this as C, okay. So before we start our uh, numerical, let's uh, quickly solve our reactions of R A and R B. Okay, as you see here, the W per unit run is acting over the whole span. So W into L is the concentrated load which is which is acting over the center, and W L by two is going to this A point, and W L by two is going to this B point, as it is a symmetric structure. Okay, so R A and R B, R A and R B is equal to what? W into L upon 2. Okay. Because we are having a W intensity per unit run over L span. So W into L by 2 is going to A part and W L by 2 is going to B part. Okay. As you can see, this is a simply supported beam or this is a determinate beam. Okay. So DS value for this beam is equal to what? You can calculate the DS value from R E minus R formula, that is R E is external support reactions in this beam, that is two supports, two reactions are acting over this hinge support that is one vertical and another one is horizontal and one 
vertical reaction is acting over this roller support. So total reaction we are having three. So three minus three we are having static equilibrium conditions. So it is zero. So it is a determinant B. It is a determinant B. Okay. So we are having a RA and RB value. Now I would like to find and I would like to tell you that what is the value of bending moment at C point. Okay. So just rub it. Okay. So bending moment at C point will be as we are having this is WL by 2 here and this is also having WL by 2 here. Okay. And this is our C point. Okay. And a uniformly distributed load is acting over the whole span of W intensity and total is L and this is your L by 2 here. Okay. So bending moment at C will be bending moment at C will be WL by 2 into L by 2 WL by 2 into L by 2. Okay. And this uniformly distributed load W intensity uh, of uh, acting at a L by 2 distance. So this is W into L by 2 is the concentrated load which is acting at this midpoint of L by 2 and which is acting at the center. So L by 4. So it is your minus of W into L by 2 is the concentrated load and it is acting at the L by 4 distance. Okay. So this is the equation. So I am solving W L square upon 4 minus W L square upon 8. So it is it, if I am taking 8 L sin, so 8 to W L square, W L square upon 8. So bending moment at C, we are having the value of W L square by 8. And since it is a uniformly distributed load, then the bending moment diagram will be parabolic in nature. Okay. So let's draw a bending moment diagram for this. So this is our bending moment diagram. This is parabolic in nature and maximum ordinate of this is WL square upon 8. Okay. So which is in positive in nature and this is our A point, this is our B point. So now uh, we know on the basis of conjugate beam method the bending moment diagram. This is our BMD. Okay. So based on the BMD we draw our M upon EI diagram. So if I am uh, dividing the whole diagram with EI then and applying loading in this direction so this is our m upon ea diagram okay m upon ea diagram so and the magnitude is what is this magnitude wl square upon 8 is the m value upon ea so it is wl square upon 8 ea is the magnitude at the center okay and this is our conjugate b this is nothing but M upon EI diagram with loading is our conjugate beam diagram also. Okay. So it is our conjugate beam with loading. Okay. And if I am denoting this A is A dash and this is R A dash here and this is our B dash point and this is our R B dash here. Okay. So this is our conjugate beam and with altitude W L square upon 8 EI. Okay. So if I need to find the slope at uh, each supports A and B then from most theorem 1 R A dash will be the value which is equal to the slope. So R A dash is nothing but it is the shear force in the conjugate beam or slope in the real beam. Okay. So likewise we are having R B dash this is the slope at your real beam. Okay. And, uh, if I am interested in finding the deflection in the uh, real beam, then I would like to tell you that this point in the conjugate beam, this is our bending. If I am taking the bending moment value at this point, it, this is our C dash. Okay. So we are having the value of maximum deflection in the real beam. Okay. So apply this, these concepts. Okay. So this is a conjugate beam here. So uh, what is the total load over this beam? So the total load over this beam is the area of this parabolic diagram. Okay, parabolic diagram. 
so the total load total load on this beam is equal to what the area of this parabolic beam so what is the area of this parabola it is nothing but it is this 2 by 3 into b into h so what is this b b is the is it is your length and here okay and so 2 by 3 into b is your length into h is your w l square upon 8 w l square upon 8 here okay so after solving this this is your uh 2 w l q upon 24 ea so it is cancel out by 12 this is w l q upon 12 ea okay so this total load is acting at the center here and half of this w l q upon 12 ea is going to this r dash and half of the 12 w l q upon 12 ea is going to this r b dash okay so we are having the r dash value And R B dash value. So here, this is our W L Q upon twelve A. So the value of R A dash and value of R B dash is nothing but it is the half of what W L Q upon twelve E A. Okay. So this is our W L Q upon twenty four E A. So this is the slope at A and Okay, so this slope in the real beam is the W L Q upon twenty four A, and depending upon the nature, that is minus or plus. We are if I am considering a clockwise is positive and anticlockwise is negative, that slope at A will be your plus W L Q upon twenty four A, and the slope at B will be minus W L Q upon twenty four A. So this is the way you find your slope. Now I am uh, taking my rest part here. So slope by this way you can calculate your slope and. Uh, If I have to calculate our deflection, so to calculate deflection at C, to calculate deflection at C, the bending moment at C in conjugate beam I am interested in finding out. Okay. so bending moment in conjugate beam so this is a bending moment diagram now uh, conjugate beam diagram with m upon a diagram also okay so if i am taking the bending moment at the c dash point then i have my deflection in real beam okay so bending moment at c in conjugate beam which is equal to bending moment at c dash in conjugate beam which is equal to what is this r a dash value multiply by what this is our l by 2 this total span is l So this value is L by two here. This value is L by two here. Okay, and uh, so R A dash into L by two. Okay, so this is our first force R A dash into L by two, and this is our rest value. Okay, so this is R A dash value is your what? R A dash value is W L Q upon twenty four. This part is two by three. Two by three into B is your L by two distance. Into H is your W L square upon A E A. Okay, and it is acting at this point. And the C G from this is what is this value? This is three by eight of B. Okay, so three by eight of B is L by two here. So after putting the value of three by eight of B is L by two here. Okay, so by we solving this equation and what is the value of R dash? We already calculated as your W L 